Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making over this pitcher and this uh, silver plated platter uh, that I found while thrifting. And uh, so I'm just going to mix some of this kernel mustard uh, and this is a Dixie Belle chalk paint and I'm not sponsored. I do sell this in my store, but I'm, I'm not sponsored by, by Dixie Belle. And I'm going to mix it about half and half with baking soda. Now, you could add a little less. I wouldn't recommend adding more because I got this about as thick as you can get it and still be able to get a pretty smooth coat. But I did want, you know, a considerable amount of texture here. So that's why I mixed it a little heavy. But just make sure that you get this stirred really well and you get all the lumps out. I probably shouldn't be using a paintbrush here to stir with because it's it's uh, kind of hard on paintbrushes. But I get in a hurry and um, I'll just use what I have handy. And I plan on using this paintbrush so I just skipped a step. Now I have taken this um, picture already and spray some clear coat on it now you can use any kind of clear coat that you want uh but um i think i used krylon matte finish uh but it just helps that first coat of chalk paint to stick better so i give this whole pit whole picture um two coats of this chalk paint uh, obviously i let it dry in between and then on the inside i don't paint the very inside but i paint the inside up to the neck just or down to the neck so that way when you're looking down into the pic picture that's what you see uh, but i like to leave that inside in case someone decides to put flowers or something in this a lot of people don't realize that you can paint these glass items chalk paint will cover just about anything uh, obviously you don't want to eat out of them afterwards but you know chalk paint can change a lot of items and like I said, I, I just don't paint that inside so that I can put uh, water or whatever if, if I decide to or if whoever is purchasing it decides they want to do that. Uh, and now I'm putting two coats on front and back or top and bottom, whatever you want to call it, of this uh, silver uh, plated piece. Obviously, I wouldn't paint over silver, but this is just a silver plate piece. And uh, so I'll be painting two coats front and back. Hey, in some of my previous videos, I mentioned that I make um, I make transfers out of uh, just the back side of, uh, of a napkin. And so I've just taken where a napkin is two or three plies, I've just taken that very back ply here and stamped um, and put my inked my stamp and put it on on that. And so when you decoupage that onto items, it uh it goes on very smoothly and if you cut up right next to it obviously you you can't see any tissue at all but down at the legs that was just too tedious to cut so i just didn't cut as close around the legs and i'll just go back over that with a little bit of chalk paint and and hide if there's any tissue showing and and it does show just a little bit so um, if this had been a three-ply napkin, it may not have, but this was just a two-ply. And uh, so that extra tissue there at the bottom didn't, didn't go away. But uh, like I said, I just took a little bit of the same color of chalk paint and just kind of painted in between the legs there and around the feet and, uh, and it covered. So this kind of uh, transfer is very easy to decoupage on uh you just the only problem it lays down very well the only problem is it's it's very delicate so you just have to be very careful and as you can see there at the bottom you can kind of still see that tissue but like i said i'll be hiding that with some chalk paint and then we're going to clear coat over this anyway so um it it works out really well Actually, I said we're going to be clear coating over this. We're actually not. We're going to be putting a wax on it. Okay, so I've done the same thing here with this cow. Uh, I just stamped it onto, with some black ink, I just stamped it onto the the back layer of a napkin and cut it out. And, and now I'm decoupaging that onto the silver plate piece. 
And if you haven't guessed yet, obviously my theme here is, is farm animals. So same technique for this cow. And because he's long there, I just kind of do one side at a, at a time. You have to be careful doing that with this tissue though, because it, it, if you lay it down, if you don't lay it down very delicately, it could, it could stick to the other side, but it, this, it didn't happen here. And again, around those feet in the back, I didn't do as close of cutting, so uh, because it would just be too delicate, and I'll, I'll just touch that up with some chalk paint. Okay, so I've already uh, touched up this picture here with the chalk paint, and I'll let it dry, and now I'm going to be doing some white wax uh, over the top of this, because I, I do like this yellow, but I wanted to tone it down a little bit, and I wanted to give it some more dimension. Uh, especially because it has some texture in it. So that texture will grab this white wax and give it kind of a milky finish, but it also will protect it. So, uh, and if I leave any of that tissue still showing, then this white wax will kind of uh, camouflage that also. So I just go over the whole piece with, um, with a wax brush and some white wax. And then I just, I also do that inside and then I just go back over and wipe it down with a smooth cloth. And I love the look that this white wax gives this paint. Uh, it just gives it more of a richer uh, finish with more dimension and it tones down that yellow. Uh, but I do the same thing on this piece. I just give it a good coat front and back and just wipe it down with a smooth cloth. And, uh, and it not only does it change the look of this paint, but it gives a really good protected, protective finish to the chalk paint. And obviously, anytime you use chalk paint, you need to put some kind of uh, coat on the top to seal it, whether it's a clear coat or some sort of wax. Since these two uh, items went pretty quickly, I decided to add another one. I had thrifted this uh, this wall hanging at, uh, at a thrift store, and it um, it was actually the price on it was four dollars, which I thought was great for this size wall hanging. Uh, but uh, this particular day, it was half price, so two dollars is what I paid for this piece, and. I don't know if you can tell here, but that matting on it is a, is a uh, tin matting, and it has some raised design on it. So I thought this was a really good deal for this piece. And I was going to take the back off and paint it that way, but it was just too involved, and I just decided to just uh, freehand this and trim it out. And it was pretty easy to freehand. And, uh, and then I did two coats of this drop cloth, which was really close to the color of the matting in the back. So now all I have to do to this piece, because I'm very happy with the frame being black and, um, and distressed already. So all I need to do here is uh, put a stencil on it in black. And um, I had this farmhouse stencil and it just happened to fit perfectly into this frame. So um, this, this flip here was very quick. If you don't count the drying time, maybe five to 10 minutes. And uh, so I was really happy to find this and, and I'll profit pretty good on this one. I hope I've inspired you guys to go thrifting. If you haven't thrifted, you're missing out because you can find some of the neatest pieces. And, um, and a lot of them may be dated, but uh, look beyond colors because we know we can change that. And um, you look at the bones. Like this picture is a, is a really good example. You know, it's well made and it has that metal frame. And uh, all we had to do was just paint the picture. And you know, you don't have to be able to paint, just get a stencil. And you can buy these items very cheap. So... You really should try it. And there it is finished. What a difference that made. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good evening.